us pray. Oh, Lord God, you have called us all to be saints. It's so easy to forget. We can get distracted and dissuaded. Help us, O oh Lord, to remember our high calling and your great love for us and inspire us, O oh Lord, to press on, living in the direction that you would have us grow. Bless these words this day our meditations upon them, and our response to them. In Christ's name, amen. Th this morning, I'd like to speak with you about saints. There's a cute story about saints. A, a pastor was called by the local funeral home to come and do a service for a man named Bill, and when the pastor got there, he discovered uh, that Bill was not a member of a church, in fact, as he sat down with Bill's family, he said, well, tell me about Bill. They said, what's there to tell? And he said, well, um, did he have any friends? No. Did he uh, have any hobbies? No. Uh, what did he do with his life? Sin. <laughs> and uh, like, what, what kind of sin? And then they detailed, he had done it all. <laughs> um, and uh, the pastor said, well, why did he want the, a pastor to do his funeral? And his family said, well, he just said that whenever he died, they would go rent a pastor and pay him 500 bucks. But when he gave his funeral eulogy, the condition is that he had to mention uh, that he was a saint. <laughs> and so the pastor went ahead and did Bill's service. And he was honest. And he shared every sin that the family told him about that Bill had done and the wake of destruction that he'd left in his past. And he, he, he got done uh, with the laundry list. And his last words for his uh, eulogy were, um, Bill was a sinner, but compared to the rest of his family, he was a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know what you think of when you think of the word saint, but I, I think of the uh, sort of the superstars, the, the people that are saints in the Roman Catholic Church. And Ron, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, being a saint is a big deal. I mean, they, uh, there's, I think, uh, 1.2 billion Roman Catholics on the planet Earth today out of 7 billion in the world. And in the whole history of the church, there are only 10,000 people who've made the cut. Um, one of those most recently named to be a saint, and I, I have no problem with that, was uh, Pope John Paul II, who was named by Pope Francis this spring to that lofty status of being added to the list. It's sort of like an induction into the Hall of Fame. And John Paul, maybe you remember him, he was that Polish guy uh, that uh, helped to, with the, the fall of communism in Poland. He was Pope for 27 years. And I, I think he gave us the Pope Mobile in terms of uh, traveling around, but he, he traveled the globe and made connections with people and built bridges between folks so that when, when he died in April of 2005, uh, his funeral was watched on television. How many of you saw that funeral service? Can I see your hands? Um, but it, was, it was seen by an estimated over two billion people. It was the most watched uh, television event in human history. And the folks that came together for that funeral, it was, they, these people would never have been caught dead in the same place at the same time. With each, but somehow this man transcended and brought them together. I, I still remember being invited uh, to go to a memorial service that was held for John Paul in Muskegon at St. Michael's Catholic Church. And I went because I was invited by the Jewish rabbi. <laughs> That's the de my definition of sainthood. You know, if you, if you have a service at the Catholic Church, you, get an, you invite a Methodist by the Jewish rabbi. You, you must be doing something right. Um, but it's not just 
the superstars who are saints, at least in my book. Most of the saints that I've had a, the privilege of knowing or learning about are ordinary human beings. One of the great privileges of being a pastor is you run into them again and again in the life of the church. And this congregation is no exception. There are some great saints in this room today. Uh, they're ordinary people like uh, Joshua Smith. Uh, Joshua is the nine-year-old boy who um, in 2012 uh, heard on the news that the city of Detroit was in some financial difficulty. He had no idea how big the difficulty was or what a difference he would make, but he decided he was going to have a lemonade stand and raise money to help the city pay down its debt. That nine-year-old boy, in three days with a lemonade stand, <laughs> raised $1,000 and wrote the check out to the city. Um, I don't know what he was putting in that lemonade, but he... he uh, I, I just... You can, be an ordinary, you can be a child and be a saint. I, I, I wish you could all meet Art. Art is one of the saints in my book. He, he's never going to be on the cover of a magazine. You're never going to hear headlines about Art. Uh, but I had the privilege of meeting Art. He's a short little guy. Uh, he has trouble walking. Uh, probably uh, he didn't get picked for very many athletic teams either. When he was, But Art decided, uh, he heard a, an advertisement once about the Red Cross needing blood. And he thought, you know, I... I can do something about that. He went to his pastor and said, can, can we have a blood drive at our church? And the pastor said, sure. And then Art went to the Red Cross and said, can you have a blood drive at our church? And they said, sure. What do you need? And, and Art asked, and he, he got the volunteers together, and he set up, and he put out the publicity, and he started a blood drive. And, and uh, he, he learned that for every pint of blood collected, it has the potential to save three lives. Uh, Art f figured out that you could have blood drives every six weeks. And so he's been organizing blood drives every six weeks for the last 15 years and has collected enough blood that if you do the math, it works out to about 15,000 lives. Um, and Art, you know, nobody pats him on the back or writes headlines, but he, he's a saint in my book. Hey, I met another one this week, Karen Olson. Karen is the founder of Family Promise, the organization that, that we... Um, help to support, and she happened to be at the annual dinner for Family Promise in, of the Lakeshore in Muskegon and told the story about how it all got started. She was walking down a street one day and there was a, a woman sitting on the pavement uh, like you can find in almost any city in America. Uh, she was one of those homeless people that had the little cardboard sign. And um, Karen almost walked by, but something just moved her to go across the street and buy a sandwich. And she brought back the sandwich and offered it to the woman. And with the offering of a sandwich, a relationship started. She got to know this woman as a human being. And she began bringing a sandwich on a weekly basis to this woman for two years. It took her about that long to realize there were lots of other people in her condition who needed sandwiches. And so she uh, started a sandwich ministry at the bus station. And that one sandwich a week grew into hundreds of sandwiches that were given to hungry people. And as she was giving out those sandwiches to hungry people, uh, she, she learned about the condition of homelessness and realized that there was a hole in the social service safety net, that if you were homeless with a family, th there weren't any places to go. 
And, and so she had this idea, I wonder if we could start a homeless shelter that would specialize with families. So she got together a group of people, and they began talking about it, and they began pursuing a building. They thought, if only we had a building. And uh, the, the building proved elusive, expensive, they couldn't, couldn't get it, and finally they were about ready to quit when they realized um, that lots of the people were there represented churches, and churches had buildings, but none of the churches felt like, hey, we can, we can do this full time. But then they started talking, well, maybe we could do it for little pieces of time. And the Interfaith Hospitality Network, as it was called at the beginning, was born. Today there are over 2,000 congregations across the country participating in the Family Promise Network. Um, this ministry to care for the needs of family have been replicated. And, oh, I... Karen Olson, who cared enough to offer a sandwich to someone who needed it, as a saint in my book. Saints are people who just show up uh, without a lot of fanfare, and they follow their heart to love Christ. I hope and pray that each of us um, know that life is about more than just being entertained, it's about more than building up the pile and then living off of it in our retirement. <laughs> it's about finding ways to say thank you to God for the gift of life and to embody His love and grace in ways that make a profound difference in the lives of others. Lesbia Scott has written a hymn. It's one of my favorite in the hymn book. It's going to be our, our closing hymn, but she says it this way, I, I sing a song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, who lived and toiled and fought and died for the Lord they loved and knew. And one was a shepherdess, and one was a, one was a doctor, and one was a queen, and one was a shepherdess on the green. They were all of them saints of God, and I mean God helping to be one too. May it be so for us. Amen.